This short tutorial video is first of the three videos going through the various statistical simulations in ADS software. In this first video we will focus on Monte Carlo simulations in ADS. Basically Monte Carlo simulation in ADS is a two-step process wherein in first step we set the Monte Carlo controller in the second step we assign the required tolerances and components. While running any statistical simulation it is imperative to find sufficient number of trials to have a statistically meaningful results after simulations. For calculation of number of trials needed for Monte Carlo the formula shown on this slide can be well used. For a specific case and shown on the slide if we want to achieve 94.4% confidence level that is standard deviation of 2 as per the table given above on the slide an error of plus minus 2% in our judgment whereas the expected yield of circuit is around 80% we need about 1600 trials this kind of simulations can run for a long time depending upon the number of components placed on the design but to have a statistically meaningful and results with higher confidence levels require designers to have more iterations in their process. Now let us understand this example by running a simple lab exercise in ADS to see how Monte Carlo controller can be set up, how we can plot the results and how we can assess the results which we are obtaining from simulations. Okay, so let's start understanding Monte Carlo based simulations in ADS by taking the simple example. So here we are using the same low pass filter which we used in optimization demonstration. So for Monte Carlo, uh, we go to the same library, uh, Optim Stat DOE, and from here we can uh, pick the Monte Carlo uh, simulator and place it onto a schematic. Once Monte Carlo is placed on a schematic, there are essentially two things which designers need to define. So first is the simulation instance name. And as we can see in our design, uh, SP1 is our simulator which we are using. So we can do a single click and, and give the appropriate name in, in the field. So here we give SP1. And secondly, we need to choose the number of iterations which needs to be performed on the circuit in order to capture the statistical variation due to the different component tolerances. So as demonstrated in PPT slide we will uh, calculate the number of iterations needed and accordingly we can enter the number of iterations here in order to have sufficient confidence in our statistical display. After completing this first step of Monte Carlo controller, we need to select these uh, component values to be statistically variable under a certain tolerances range. In order to activate um, and define the tolerance associated with each component, we can go to options of simulate uh, simulation variable setup. And here, like we saw in optimization video, we have different tabs. So this time we will go to statistics tab and enable the statistics for all the required components as may be needed. Please note for each values we can define different type of distribution functions such as Gaussian, log normal, uniform or discrete uh, to allow component values to be varied in a particular distribution function. For this demonstration we will use uh, Gaussian distribution for all the components. Then in format we can define either the plus minus format or plus minus percentage format. So let's change uh, all the values to be in percentage form for this particular demonstration. Uh, designers can feel free to use either the plus minus or plus minus in terms of percentage. For inductors we will choose a 10% which is a very uh, nominal value for having inductor tolerance and capacitors will be varied by plus and minus 5% in this. So as, as can be seen it's very easy to select as many components as you want for statistical simulations and we can assign the respective tolerances in the components. So once we are done with these two steps we are ready to simulate the performance of this filter uh, with the Monte Carlo uh, based simulator in ADS. In order to run Monte Carlo we just click the regular simulate button icon 
and once it is run depending upon the number of iteration chosen uh, we will see a data display and this can be seen the spread in S21 graph as well as input return loss of S11 where our filter was perfectly working fine but with the component tolerances as can be seen the, the 3 dB cutoff frequency is varying quite a lot and also the return loss is going as bad as somewhere close to 5 or 6 dB at the pass bend edge of this low pass filter. In order to see this more clearly let's add a limit line of a 3 dB in S21 plot and a limit line of minus 15 dB in S11 plot and try to assess how many traces are violating our our meeting our performance criteria on, on, on this graph by using Monte Carlo. In order to add a limit line this procedure is very simple in ADS we can just enter the equation and we can type a equation of bandwidth uh, 3 dB as to 1 and we can give the desired value such as minus 3. Uh, similarly for S11 we can insert another equations and we can type S11 uh, 15 dB limit. I mean we can select whatever name uh, which is suited to us and we can give the value of minus 15. Now once these two equations are plotted we can plot these numbers on the graph so that we can see a solid line appearing and then we can zoom in to graph to inspect what's going on near our limits. Now in order to add S21 limit line on this graph we can simply double click on it and in terms of data set and equations all the equations which we write on the data display page goes into equations data set so we can select the equations and we can see there are two equations which can be plotted for S21 we will select the first equation and we can add it as uh, versus frequency so we can select add versus and from here we can select our circuit simulation data set which is circuit 1 and we can choose the frequency which is on x axis so that the same number gets plotted across the frequency as a flat line. So once we click OK we can see a solid line appearing at minus 3 dB on, on uh, the S21 graph similarly on S11 we can double click go to equations and plot S11 limit line and we can see uh, the limit of uh, minus 15 so we forgot to choose the frequency so we can go and delete and select a frequency um, I mean this this limit against frequency so we can go to equations uh, select S11 add versus and then we can choose the frequency specification for x-axis and as it can be seen there is a solid red line appearing at minus 15. So now let's zoom into this graph and see what's going on near our pass band. To enable this we can activate the zoom window icon and we can zoom in close to our pass band. And as can be seen here from for minus 3 dB the bandwidth is actually changing from around 110 megahertz to around 140 megahertz approximately with the component tolerances involved. Similarly on written loss perspective if we zoom in to this written loss near the limit line and as we can see there are a lot of traces violating this written loss of minus 15 and actually the written loss is getting degraded quite a lot uh, with the component tolerances. So these are some of the value additions of performing Monte Carlo for RF circuit design so as to enable uh, designers to see what's the effect of statistical variations on their circuit. Stay tuned for more videos on yield analysis and sensitivity analysis where we will do more deterministic analysis of how many circuits are failing to meet our specifications and in sensitivity histograms we will see what are the components which are actually creating the problem for our circuits um, causing this low yield or poor response in comparison to the component tolerances. Thank you for your attention. Uh, have a nice day.